Greetings. Today we are now joined by Stefano, who shall be talking about Debian reimbursement system and how he has been working on it. I'll let you have the stage. Thank you. Thanks. So, um, yeah, I'm Stefano Rivera. I'm a DebConf uh, committee member, and I've organized a DebConf in the past, so I've dealt with the Debian reimbursement process quite a bit. This year I'm serving as the treasurer for DebConf 23. Um, yeah, I've, ha I've had to spend Debian's money and work with Debian's treasurer, treasurer team and the trusted organizations to get money from them, spend them on things, get reimbursements to our project members. I built a lot of what's behind the current DebConf website, so I think that that's what made the tre um, treasurer team ask me if I'd have a look at this problem. They came up with a plan of what they thought could improve the um, De Debian reimbursements flow. And Matteo and I sat down last year at DebConf and designed something else that we thought would work. And that, that's what I've been trying to implement for the last while. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about how reimbursements currently work or don't work and what's the the system I've been working on, how it um, solves it. This project has been funded by Freaksian's Debian project funding. I'll talk a little more about that later. So money in Debian works like this. Sponsors give money because they want to support the Debian project, but the Debian project doesn't have an organization for them to give money to. They give money to a trusted organization. These are Usually non-profit organizations, or at least SPIs, are non 5013 c 3 in the US, a non-profit. Um, and we have other trusted organizations, Debian France and Debian.ch, which are the... Uh, every country has its own different legal structures for companies. We have what we've got. When we want to spend money, we tell the appropriate trusted organization, which we pick based on the money we want to spend and the project we want to spend it on, to donate this money, to spend this money in um, pursuing Debian's goals. So you could say the money belongs to Debian, but it's really being held by another organization that is responsive to our needs and spends on our behalf. We might be changing how this works in the next few years. We keep talking about doing it, but it hasn't actually happened yet. Generally speaking, we pick the appropriate trusted organization for the area in the world we're spending in because it's most convenient to pay someone in the US from SPI and someone in Europe from Debian France or Debian Switzerland. Most of our spending is on our conference, which is also our, our fundraising activity, and usually but makes a profit or even when we don't plan on it. We're definitely not planning on it this year, so I'm not expecting it, but who knows. Um, we also spend money on developer sprints, bug squashing parties, infrastructure, and hardware for developers. If they are working on something and they need some hardware to do something with their package or something they're working on in Debian, the DPL will probably approve for them to buy some hardware and have Debian pay for it. So the conference is a little bit special because it's a large amount of money and, and um, a lot of organizations involved and a conference-wide budget. So the different, different rules apply there. But for everything else we're talking about here, it's basically a developer spends some money and, they, and then they want to get some money back to reimburse them for making this expense. Sometimes a sponsor will give us some hardware or some other kind of in-kind sponsor, sponsorship. Um, yeah, and sometimes the trusted organization will pay for something directly. Like if we're buying hardware for DSA, we're not going to have a DSA team member pay with their credit card and get reimbursed, probably. We'll have the TO sign a contract and pay. So... The flow for spending money is that the DPL is responsible for all money, for authorizing money to be spent in Debian, DPL, Debian project leader. 
And the DPL can delegate a budget to the DebConf treasurer for DebConf ex expenses or something else theoretically. There's no specific power for this delegation. They, just, they can delegate part of their responsibility. Um, the trusted organizations sign contracts on Debian's behalf and they are inf invoiced by companies that are providing services. And then there are developers who are paying things out of their pockets and getting reimbursed by the project. There are cases where a developer can't afford to pay something out of pocket. It's probably a bit unfair to expect all our developers to have enough cash on hand to pay for any of their Debian expenses and then wait a month to get reimbursed. So in situations where the developer isn't willing to, to get reimbursed, we can often organize that a um, TO pays directly. But it's more complicated and if we could streamline the reimbursement process, maybe we could use it more. So here's how this currently works. It's very email-based. If you want to spend some money for something in Debian, you file a RT ticket to get for pre-approval for making your expense. This ticket, you CC the Debian RT, and sorry, you, you CC the DPL, and the RT tracker of SPI, if you're going with SPI, or whatever the other appropriate mechanism is for the TO that you are, that is going to reimburse you. The DPL sends an approvement, a approval. You spend that money, you compile an expensive report, which is usually a pile of PDFs that you put into one, and a summary sheet that says, here are all of the totals in one currency. I'd like this much of that currency back. SPI recommends you do this in XE's travel calculator, which if you have more than five items on it, doesn't print properly, so you have to go and edit the HTML by hand. It's a bit of a pain. You print this to a PDF. You prepare a bank details form by going to the SPI website and filling out a page full of bank details and generating another PDF that you add into your bundle of PDFs. Then you attach this to an email that has a statement in it saying, I'm not requesting sponsorship from anybody else. And you submit a reimbursement ticket and the, DP and the TO should reimburse you. That's theoretically how it works. In practice, it's usually messier. I've got an example. This is, we had a DebConf video sprint recently. Um, so it's a slightly more complicated. It's not one person spending money. It's five of us meeting up in Paris to do some work for the video team, and we are asking for money in uh, five, two different currencies in this request, but in practice, there are gonna be more currencies involved. Um, it's being spread across SPI and Debian France. There's a total budget, and yeah, it's a combination of travel accommodation meals. These are all things that the TOs can cover. So this email goes to a long list of people. Um, and in this case, there were even some mistakes in here. Um, I see he's got the request has the Debian RT tag in the subject, which is required when you're interacting with Debian's RT system, but SBI system doesn't require that, so it's unnecessary. The DPL reads this email and says, yes, I approve that. And the copies go to all of the same people. If they drop anybody, things will get confused. And things do get confused. Somebody says, I didn't see the reply. Was this ever approved? I mean, at least they reached out to us and asked, was it approved? This is the, treasurer, uh, the contact person in SPI who's responding by that treasurer email address. So the DPL has to say, yes, here's the email I sent. Can I help you find it? I'll resend it to you. And yeah, please resend it. And then at this point, the sprint has happened. Let's try and get people reimbursed. Here are the people SPI will take. The others will go to Debian France. For the people who are doing SPI, please fill out the reimbursement form and do all the things I described. And Okay, one person couldn't turn up, so we cancel it. Then someone else, what's the status? I was expecting money in my bank account. When am I gonna get paid? Um, 
you're asking the wrong team. You were going to get reimbursed by Debian France, not SPI. The request did actually go to Debian France in the beginning, but um, at this point, every, for the complete clarity, Jonathan says, here's the budget, let Debian France, please reimburse this. And in my case, I submit my pile of PDFs and my statement, and a couple of days later, I get an, a notice that it should have gone to my bank account. It worked. That was a lot of emails. Emails got lost, people lost track of what was going on. It's not pretty. These systems work just fine in a small, in a small group, but we can really do better. So we, our approach here is we can have a web interface that guides you through the process. We can have a log on each request that anyone who's looking at it can see, here's what's happened, here's where we are. We can automate all of the exchange rate conversions. We can sum up the budget for you so you don't have to build a pretty um, text table in, the, in your email. Yes, you will still need to get receipts because our TOs won't be able to reimburse you without some proof that you spent the things that you said you spent. And you'll probably have to scan the receipts. You still have to fill out some bank details because the TO has to give you money, but we can save them. Um, and the TO still probably goes through some manual processes on their end when they actually pay you. There are ways that we can maybe automate this. I think SEPA has a QR code that some bank apps could scan and we could pre-populate it with the information to make a transfer. And for WISE payments, they have an API that we could pre-populate all the bank details in and make it happen. So we can, we can probably make improvements there if the TOs are willing to use it. So our proposal is, you log into a web interface, you describe your request and a very high level budget for it. Like we want a sprint, we, need, we think we need $2,000 for flights, $500 for hotel, etc. Goes to the DPL, DPL approves it, you spend the money, you go back to that request on the website, got a place for you to upload receipts, you click submit, you're done. I am hoping that this can result in encouraging Debian developers to spend more of Debian's money because Debian has too much money and we need to spend it. Um, that we can try and make things a bit more common between our TOs and track the spending we do with, within TOs. There's, there's other discussions to be had around that. Hopefully this avoids confusion between TOs about who's responsible for paying what. And hopefully we can avoid you having to fill out the same long bank form every time you want to get some money back. This work, the, the Debian treasurer team requested it, but Freaksian has a project funding initiative that I applied for to do it in, where Freaksian pays for somebody to do something to improve Debian. Um, I'm a Freaksian collaborator, I contract with them, so it's very easy for me to say, can I spend X number of hours on this project that'll be useful to Debian. Anybody else can do that too. There's a project funding um, repo on Salsa. You can file, there's a readme in there that tells you how to file a request for a project. It'll be reviewed and it will be offered to tender to anyone in the project who wants to work on it. Um, and if you accept it, you can, yeah, you will be funded to work, to work on something to make Debian better. The requesting for this was, we'd, we requested three, like, 40-hour weeks milestones, and we're currently at one and a half of them about a year later. That's just the nature of part-time work. I pick, on, I pick away at this when I've got some time. It's kind of in an MVP stage. We've got currency and exchange rate handling. I did it as a Django application. Um, as a fairly, I'd say, traditional Django application where every page is rendered as a Django view, so the, all of the logic is really on the back end and it would work just fine without JavaScript, although you might lose some nice front end niceties. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to reason about the security of it but if we want a nicer interface, we might end up going for something more API-oriented later. 
I've got an instance running on Debian.net, which I will show you now. And it really is ready to be used for some DevConf reimbursements. We must have a, we, we decided to try it on some attendees this year and see if it works, if, if we do, if we're still in agreement that we're ready to do that. Um, the test coverage isn't amazing yet, it really is early code. I, the next things for me are to, yeah, test with some real users, get out um, IRC notifications. The, the bank details form's currently a bit ugly. One of the goals was to handle something like a sprint where, you've got multi where you're making a budget request for multiple people and they're being reimbursed separately. I haven't implemented that at all yet, but the data model is there for it. It just needs um, web coverage. And yeah, we should be able to automatically select the right TO to pay, to pay you based on what country you're requesting from. At the moment, this is, has to be manually assigned by the DPL when they approve your request. GDPR is going to be a question because we're storing data about people. There are good business records reasons to store this data, but at some point you probably want to cull the old records, maybe dump out exports of um, past requests and just keep the minimal data that we need to keep in the system. And then we can show some statistics. So yeah, that's, that's where I see it going. I have a question slide, but really I think the more useful thing is to show you what it looks like. So let me do that. Oop. How do I get out of there? And into reimbursements.debian.net. You can log into that right now. Um, plus I won't. Plus, please. plus, plus, plus. Thank you. Is that enough pluses? Good question. Start a process, file a request. Pick a type of request that you want to file. Let's say you want a small event and you want, you're going to need some pizza. Pizza to feed three hungry developers who have just fixed all the bugs. Um, select a currency that you want to be reimbursed in. Handling. Multiple currencies means we need up-to-date exchange rates, so a fair chunk of this has just been building out a Django application to track currencies and exchange rates and download new exchange rates every day. Entirely tedious work, but there's now a nice Django's library for doing this if anyone wants to use it. It's got very good test coverage and no users besides me. Uh, so we, yeah, we want some meals, pizza, I don't know. We're doing this in dollars. Let's say $100 for, that's a lot for three developers, maybe $60 for, for pizza. Um, if I wanted to add another item, I could. Some people like, maybe need, maybe need some drinks. $10. And I save a draft. Boop, boop, boop. And I think it might blow up at this point because somebody was reporting that it's 503 in here. Mm. I will bypass any. Oh, come on. While we wait for cogs to turn, I don't know where they're turning, but they seem to be stuck. Um, can I answer any questions about anything? No? How can you help? How can you help? Codes on Salsa. Um, it's under uh, Salsa. Uh, that one. Salsa.debian.org, Slefano R, Debian reimbursement. Um, it's a Django app. It's, it has a bunch of open issues. Um, some of these are more straightforward than others. Some of them are fairly simple. 
I think we got some. We got our five oh fours. Yay! That probably means it's a load now. I might need to go and give it a kick. Sorry. Anything else? Yes. Yeah, thank you for uh, for this application. Uh, how I do in, or how I plan in to plan planning to do the authentication? Uh, is it possible to do it uh, through Salsa, Google, or I don't know? I mean, of course, anything is possible. Um, right now, we are just doing usernames and passwords because there was Daniel will tell you that he does not trust Salsa auth. Um, I believe that the Debian project is now entirely dependent on Salsa auth and not trusting it is probably a sign of a bigger issue. So I do intend to implement Salsa auth at some point. It, then it'll be up to, then we'll have to decide what we're going to use. But right now it's just a um, username, password. You're going to get emails from the system. To, you're going to have to um, receive an email to activate the account on the system, and if you're using a Debian.org email, then that'll prove that you have a connection to that Debian account. Yeah, I, I'll probably imp implement SSO at some point. This has loaded. TSA are actually currently discussing whether they can... Just, just for your info, DSA are currently discussing whether they can provide an SSO service because I think this uh, dependency on getting GitLab as a central authentication source into Debian is kind of not something we should do. And DSA seems to agree on, on, on that and are considering providing a different authentication source. So hope that goes somewhere because then you have an SSO backend that you might want to use. It would be nice to have a reliable open source backend, uh, SSO backend. Um, so at this point, here's our request. It looks like this to most of the people who are looking at it. Um, depending on the, the roles of your account, obviously the different things you can do. Um, the description gets carried over. There's a budget. And the amount that you've spent towards the budget is tracked and how much you are over or under. Generally, once the decision to um, spend some money on something is made, the details of exactly what you spent. Once a rough budget has been approved, the DPL probably doesn't care about the details of anymore, and neither do the TOs. They just want to see some spending that's in the same category. So we, pr yeah, we produce a summary. Here you can see the meals are being summed. So there, were, there was a request with two different meal line items, but in the, in the budget, it's just, we're just going to look at $70. And in the receipts, we're going to let you enter up to $70 of receipts for meals, and that will be acceptable. There's a log at the bottom of everything that's happened to it. So if we look at that other request that I had here, example based on the site visit we did to Hyper this year, is a fairly that's a, a request with quite a few things in it. And then receipts for all of the expenses. And you can see the full history of the, um, the request, how the budget, the budget started lower, and then we had to bump it a bit. Um, at some point, the leader account approved it and added a comment, and you can see what the budget was at that point, but maybe it changes later because you realize you're going to go over budget, and even though this thing's already approved, you add some more receipts and you send it back to the DPL saying, that please give me more budget. That button appears for that when you, when you over budget. When it's at this point, I basically have to fill in some bank details and submit them, um, and then it can go to a TO to get reimbursed. Or I can add another receipt, upload a file from my computer, um, describe what is in the receipt, because a receipt might be for more than one thing. 
And yeah. Again, we understand that your receipt might be complicated with multiple currencies. You hope you don't need it, but the system has to support it. This is where we are. I was worried I was going to run over in a short talk slot, but in a long talk slot, I have oodles of spare time. Uh, what is the database behind? Data, what, you asked what are the what, databases. What are the databases behind, yeah. I'm using Postgres. Um, in the, yeah, in the deployment right now on reimbursements.debian.net, there's a Postgres instance. Obviously for development, this is Django, so you could just run it with SQLite, it doesn't care. We are using the JSON column type for bank details because bank details vary by country and I'm sure if I try to define a database schema for it, I'd be wrong. Um, otherwise, it's all fairly simple. I've even got some documentation on this. Um, it's a fairly simple data model with uh, tables for things you'd expect tables for. Where are we? Overview, I think. How's that? There we go. Um, sorry, no, no documentation of the data model, but it's not complicated. Nicola, you had a question when they find a mic for you? No. So, uh, yeah, there was a mention on IRC of uh, OpenSUSE's travel support program system, which is, uh, open, which is free software as well. So maybe it's Ooh. a good thing to look at for inspiration. I, I hadn't heard of that. I'll definitely have a look. One kind of ugly thing here that we haven't dealt with is at some point it'd be nice to deal with uploaded images and pe maybe deal with multi-page scans. Um, at the moment when you have a receipt, it is a PDF or a image that you upload and I don't care about the details, I don't look inside it at all, but it'd probably be nice to have a thumbnail on the website and let you make it easier to see the receipt on the web interface, um, but that means image handling and just safety, security wise, it's easier to not have to deal with that problem right now. I can wait for later. Rikash. Right, so I just want to know. Uh, I'd like you to stand. All right. uh, so I just wanted to know how do you plan on integrating this with Depcon bursaries? Uh, how is pre-approved budget gonna show up? Is there like a API something, API or something that you connect with the wafer system or some, some, so some sort? No API as such yet. I think it'll be entirely manual and um, we are root, we have database access level <laughs> provisioning for these people. Uh, if we use it for bursaries, yeah, it'll be manually create the records based on a, um, a CSV list or something like that. you could essentially import uh, it from the system and then put it here. But yes. then, um, I just want to know if, if that could also probably be automated in a, in a, in a way that like it's, it's just in the system, it's approved, and then it just shows up. And then you have the maximum amount that you can like 
reimburse up to or something like that? Uh, absolutely. Um, the obviously there's a lot of money involved there, so there's definitely safety risks. If we're doing something automated like that, we probably want a manual approval step. Maybe the DevConf treasurer would have to go and approve the the request when it gets imported into the system. Or even better, the DevConf treasurer just does um, a import like that. Yeah. It stays a manual process. It's a privileged um, functionality, but this way it gets gets into the system. Yeah. And the idea for for things that are less complicated than DevConf is to allow you to create a multi-person budget and say this person is going to spend this money, this person is going to spend this money um, when you are creating your request in the system without any man, like admin involvement. Um, is it already have or will it have an email gateway so people who don't want to use the web must can use it? Let's have an email in interface, did you yeah, say? Yeah. So anything that happens in it generates an email. Um, when you create a request, the DPL will get an email saying there's a new request you should go and look at. No, I mean, as in submitting. I have no plans to handle su submissions by email. I think get, getting the, <laughs> <laughs> parsing the data that you provide is just going to be too painful. I mean, like if I did it, it would be a YAML document, and it will be so much easier to just use the web interface. And we have the email process, right? So the we, thing is, like, we have an existing email process that we've been using for 10 years, so we're not writing another email process. This is not the only system that we could ever use. There may be complex corner cases which won't go over that system, but if we can take 90% of the, the work away, from the majority of the things we're processing, we should just do that. And I'm, I, I really hope you will be able to fix the uh, small bugs that we have in time that we can run, I think we said Debian France, the Debian France reimbursements over it, um, so that we get some like real life testing, weed out the edge cases, and can kind of use this more and more and more uh, to just get out of RT tickets and, and chaotic email loops. Yeah. This can only replace the cases where we are doing a reimbursement. It can't replace any other way that a TO has to spend money on behalf of Debian. There's always going to be other processes available. But if you talk to the DPL, he'll tell you that the worst part of the job is trying to keep track of all of these emails and where, what state they're all in. It, you, yeah, you're doing the same job in DevConf. You can see what it's like. Any other questions? Do you accept the sign up for testing or like uh, volunteers uh, or like do you people, do you contact people to try? Right now it's open, you can sign up. Um, and the DPL will even receive email notifications, but he might be amused. <laughs> um, <laughs> for, no, for, for DebConf, if we use it for DebConf, we will import the bursary data into it, and we will let you know that we are using this for your bursary requests. Um, I think that's about it. I would like to, I would like everyone to give a round of applause for Stefano's work. Thank you.